Hello everybody, it is Thursday at one o'clock and this is Mary with Stamps and Lingers. Um, we're going to make us a fun little card today with some of the goodies from the Painted Poppies um, suite in the January to June mini catalog. I've got Peaceful Moments and Painted Poppies using images and sentiments. They are two sets that go together very nicely. And I have a few dies. So let's go ahead and be sure that I'm transmittalating over here and see if folks are starting to join up. And then we are going to get started. Okay, so this is a card I made. It's a fun fold. I kind of like doing fun folds for you on the video tutorials because those are a lot easier to show you in videos than they are to explain all the time. So hopefully you'll be able to enjoy this. Um, it's a port, it's a landscape gatefold. Usually a gatefold is kind of in the portrait position, but I decided to go landscape because I was playing along with a challenge and so I wanted to get the gatefold in even with the challenge layout. So there you go. Hey, how are you, Faith? Appreciate you joining. No, not Faith. Who is, who is, mm -hmm. yeah, it is Faith. Okay, hey. Hi, Nan. Hi, Kathy. Appreciate you joining. Um, if you just joined, this is the card that we're going to make today. It is a fun fold. It's a gate card, um, which means it has a belly band. And all the art and the sentiment are on the belly band for this one. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Pam. Hello, Kimberly. Appreciate you joining. Uh, once you've slid off the belly band, it just opens like that and says very simply, happy birthday. But obviously, you could make this any sentiment combination. I really, really toyed with a sympathy card. Um, but I decided to go birthday. But you could also go thank you. You could just do kind of almost anything. Always remember is a good one, especially with these poppies. Hey, Karen. Hey, Sylvia. Thank you, Kathy. I appreciate that. All right. So I, like I said, I used the Peaceful Moments and Painted Poppies both. You really kind of have to, unless you have all paper and a sentiment. It, this one doesn't even give you a sentiment. So you, these kind of go together like uh, peanut butter and jelly or chocolate and peanut butter or peanut butter, chocolate and jelly. All of those things together would go good. And I also used <clears throat> the Poppy Moments dies, which is actually the um, bundle with Peaceful Moments, okay? So these two go together as a bundle. And then I departed from the suite. I used the Stitch So Sweetly die set for my um, sentiment. And let's see, this is the largest of the dies to make the sentiment. And then I used my personal favorite, <laughs> this is my favorite die, I think like ever. These, these little berries in the frosted bouquet, one of my favorite dies ever. And I try really hard to not just use it all the time, but I love it. And so it does show up quite, quite frequently. I hope everybody say a little prayer to Stampin' Up! that frosted bouquet carries over because I will be very sad to lose that berry. Okay. Let's get started, shall we? Now, all of the card cuts will be on my blog tomorrow, so you do not need to worry about that. Hey, Honeybee Stamping Hive. Hello. Hello, Maria and Karen. Appreciate you joining. Alrighty. Now, this color combination is also from a challenge, so it is um, Pool Party, Poppy Parade, Old Olive, and Blackberry Bliss which seems like an odd combination, but actually works pretty darn perfectly with the Painted Poppies DSV. Okay, so let us start. This starts with a five and a half by eight and a half inch piece of uh, cardstock for your base. And put the eight and a half inch side along the top of your scoring tool. And we're going to score first at two and a quarter and again at six and a half. Now, one thing you'll notice is that is not an even gate. The, the challenge that I was doing had an uneven gate, and so this, this gate is taller than the bottom gate, all right? Which is why these are uneven. So you've got two and a quarter inches here and two inches here, but that's exactly what I needed for the design. And, and so there it is, that's what it is. The biggest trick with a gate card is that you have what? You have one, two, three, four, and a quarter. 
between your two gates so that your card will then fit into an A2 or medium size um, envelope, right? So when you're, if you're trying to make gates that are different sizes or making them willy-nilly, um, just remember, you need four and a quarter between the two gates and then it'll still fit in your envelope. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this away. And we're going to, uh, and I can tell you that really, a gate card is so stinking easy that the you get to spend all of your creative chops on, on your um, decorations, right? Okay, so we're just going to fold the two gates in. You do kind of want to be sure that they're straight folds. And we'll give it a little burnish once I find where I stuck my... Hmm, yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. Why not? Here we go. There it is. We'll give it a little burnish with our bone folder. Okay. Now, I have a couple of pieces of cardstock here. I used Blackberry Bliss as my uh, matte color. And I did my mats a little bigger than usual just because I wanted... Um, I just decided it looked nicer with the... Um, with a little less card space showing. So the top piece is going to be this, and then the bottom piece is going to be this design. Okay, and it'll all be kind of tied together with our belly band. Hey Lenny, how are you doing today? Hi Brooke. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a little adhering. Easy peasy. Nice and squeezy. I actually thought about doing a different color combination and different DSPs for this, but it's a little, sometimes I, I think people get a little confused when I demo one card on the video, but then I show pictures of the other card on the post. So I decided to go easy. Just keep it simple, Mary. Always go as simple as you can. Yeah, that said, said me never. I never go as easy as I can. All right. I hope you guys are all doing good with your social distancing and your stay-at-home orders and whatever is the politically correct thing to call it. Um, I think I read that quarantine is no longer politically correct. I, I don't know why, but whatever. I don't have time for that nonsense. And I hope you will join us on Saturday. We're having a Facebook Live event. Um... Well, it's a Facebook event. It goes from 1 to 6. We won't be live the whole time. But we have five demonstrators uh, from our team, our Ink and Crew team, that are going to go live. Um, really, we're going live once every hour. Somebody will be live. And we're going to be sharing projects with the Ornate Garden um, Ornate Garden Suite, and I think you're going to like it. We've also got some giveaways that are also from the Ornate Garden Suite. So... Let me give that a quick rub. I got a little jiggy with my glue there. Okay. And now we'll put this on the bottom. For me, the hardest piece of this was remembering to stay landscape, especially when I went inside on this, because I'm used to making gates that are portrait. But if you just, I just had to slow myself down and think it through a little bit. So now that I have said that, I can almost guarantee that I will screw up the sentiment for the inside. Yes, hunkering down in the south or bunkering. Actually, that might have been <laughs> kind of a Freudian slip there, yeah? Mm -hmm. Bunker, bunker hunker. It's a bunker hunker. There we go. Okay, so that's the gate card. Easy peasy. Let's go ahead and um, we'll get our belly band. This is another piece of the DSP, and I just cut a one-inch one, one inch strip. Now, you do need this to be the full 12 inches, so because it, it's a little harder to go all the way around it long ways. It wouldn't be so bad if you were doing this. You'd have plenty left over, but doing this direction. Now, when you're making a belly band for these, you want them, there's like this sweet spot of just snug enough to hold the belly band onto the card, but not so snug that you have to use a pry bar to get it off and back on, okay? So you just kind of wing it, wag it, and I'm gonna use a little liquid glue there. And I'm doing this now. I discovered as I was making the card that it's actually easiest to build 
the decorations on the card and it's easiest to do that if you have something holding the card together. Did that make sense? Okay, so there's our belly band. I'm just gonna let it set for a second and I'm going to set it aside while I build my decoration. Now, when I first built this card, I really went back and forth. In fact, I went back and forth so many times that I actually made another sentiment because part of me thought maybe what I should do instead of using a belly band would be to just adhere this to just the top half of the gate. And that way the sentiment would just stay on the card the whole time. And when your recipient opened it, it would look like that. And I really went back and forth, back and forth, and then I decided to stick with the belly band. So if you don't wanna do a belly band, you could absolutely do what I just said. Use liquid glue and only adhere this portion or get funny with it and adhere this portion, adhere the bottom. I would adhere the top just because that makes sense to me, but you could do it either way. Or go with like I've done and make the belly band. Hey, Charlotte, appreciate you joining. All right, so I'm gonna put that back on because that'll help to hold the card down. And this is, I'm gonna use this since I already made it. So this is a sentiment from Peaceful Moments. I've just stamped it um, in Poppy Parade on here. And, and what I did is when I, I put it on the card like this so I would see the angle, and then I lined up the stamp so that it would be straight when you were looking at it. If you stamped it straight like this and then turned it, it would be cattywampus, and everybody would think you were weird. Whether you were weird or not, they would think you were weird. So, so don't do that. All right, so let's go ahead, and we can just go ahead and adhere that on right now, because why not? And I'm just going to use some liquid glue on the belly band, like so, and let that sit there and get adhered while I put together a few flowers. Now, fortunately, since I don't want to make you watch glue dry, I did a little cutting ahead of time. Let me show you everything I've got cut here. I've got a little, a little bowl of cut stuff. And let me be sure I get it all out. You can see some other things I've got in the works. Okay, so, so here we go. Now let me pull out the die set and show you what we have what we have done did here. Let me put that aside so it gets adhered where it belongs. Okay, so this is this color right here is another piece of the DSP. And what I did is I cut the solid flower shapes, the big one. Good Lord, come off of there. The big one and the small one out of that, okay? And then with the detailed dies for each one, I cut the matching detailed die out of uh, basic black. Hi, Stephanie. Hey, Jeffy, appreciate you joining. And then I used a little bit of black foil to cut a couple of little flower centers in black. And this one is gonna pile on top of that one, and then that'll be separate. And then I used this, which is the detailed. Now, when you have this set of dies, these two dies kind of work together, okay? So what you'll see a lot of is some old olive cardstock cut here, and mossy meadow cut here, and then you adhere them onto each other, and it gives you a detailed, uh, it gives you a detailed leaf. Okay, well, mossy meadow and old olive are pretty, pretty typical. There's others, obviously. Okay, so I cut three of those, and then with that aforementioned wonderful dye, berries dye from Frosted Bouquet, I have three in Blackberry Bliss. Okay, so now you know the method to the madness and the cutting scheme. So let's go ahead and do a little uh, fixing and stamping here. Now, before I put those on, I'm going to add a little texture to those. And I'm using um, this little splotch die in um, the Painted Poppies set. And I'm going to use some Painted Poppies ink. Or no, not Painted Poppies. That's not even a thing. Per Poppy Parade. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm just going to stamp kind of around, so you got tone on tone, because that's the DSP is Poppy Parade, 
and I'm just stamping around kind of generally where I would say petals were going to be marked, right? Is it really all that critical? No. Okay. And then we'll do the smaller one like this. Whoops. There we go. <clears throat> all right. Now we're going to use a little liquid glue. Uh, on previous cards where I've made these flowers, I have adhered all the way around. Let's get all those little pieces out. But I saw, oh, probably out on Pinterest, where somebody had just adhered the centers. Still lined up, but only adhered the centers. And I'm going to show you what happens here in just a second. Right after I daub up. Boy, did I get busy with that liquid glue. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll set that aside. And then I'm going to do the same with the larger one. Just adhering the middle. Look at that, wanting to get in on the game. And let's see, where's the, where's the line D up part here? Just a sec. Okay, here we go. Pretty sure that's it. Okay. So just line up the edges, but only adhere the middle. Okay. And then with your larger one, just kind of go around it like this to give it a little rounded shape. Okay. And no, flowers don't usually have their edges weird like that, but it makes it a little designy, a little artsy, and it gives a little bit of dimension, okay? Now we'll take and add our foil um, little middle middles, our little middle peoples, like here. Now, on a regular card that wasn't already kind of thick and big, I might actually pop that smaller center up with a dimensional, probably a black dimensional at this point. Now let's see, we've got also got this one. Come here, come here you. Uh, notice that I did not round up the smaller of the flowers because it's gonna tuck under and I don't need him to be round. I need him to be flat. Hi Marty, appreciate you joining and that is nice of you to say. And thanks, Kathy. I do like that extra little bit of oomph, oomph. Okay, so always, 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 when you're making anything that even sort of smacks as a collage, set it up first so that you can make sure you're getting it right. Um, and I'm just, this is real basic. All right. Like so. Now, there's no doubt your recipient needs to use a little bit of finesse when they put the belly band on and off or they'll be ripping leaves every which way. But, you know, it's a piece of art. They should be careful anyway, right? Yeah, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Now, this one I seem to believe I needed to cut off to make it just fit where I needed it to be without going over the edge. You really want it to not go over the edges of your card because if it does, then um, <clears throat> then it's gonna be really hard to put it in the... Okay, so I like that. You can kind of arrange your leaves so that it gets how you want. Okay, now you might think that I would pop this one on dimensionals, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to give it another little curl here. And that'll let it set a little bit above the other flower without making a whole lot of extra, extra dimensional. Okay, so let me pick this up. <clears throat> and here's how I'm going to do this. I'm going to first pick these two up just like this. And put a little bit of liquid glue on the back of both of them together. Just telling you, if you don't have a reverse tweezers, get you a reverse tweezers. Just trust me on this. And then we'll put it back more or less where it was. You know, it's it's a collage. It's not a 
not a rocket ship. If it was a rocket ship, you might want to be a little more, you know, careful. But it's not, so you don't have to worry too much. A more complicated collage, I would probably take a picture of it once I had it where I wanted it. In fact, there's really no probably about it. But since I'm building it essentially on the card front, and what really matters is that I can see all of my leaves and berries, but they don't go over the edge of the card. And there's really only three stations, one, two, three. Eh, it's kind of not that critical, okay? So let's pick the last one up. The other thing you wanna do is not stick glue out on these ends, okay? Um, look, I got that one upside down. These are the things that matter to me. Shouldn't, but they do. Okay, let me double check that I've got it in the or orientated the way I want it. Orientated. Hi, Marika, did I say that correct? And I am tickled to death. That is the nicest thing anybody said to me in a long time. I'm the subject of a binge watch. Woohoo! Thank you so much for that lovely thing to say. That is nice. Okay, so anyway, what I was saying is, before I got off on my little self-congratulations there, uh, don't put glue out on these tips because otherwise um, it's likely to stick to the card front and that's really not what you want with this card at all, is it? Now that was not a catastrophic error there because um, it's going to be covered with glue so or with a flower. So the fact that I put glue where I didn't want it turned out to be okay. All right, now I'm going to put this flower on first. Just use glue in the center of the flower. Put him on like so. And because he's rolled up a little bit, it'll be pretty easy to tuck my flat flower up underneath him. All right. And here we go. Flat flower up underneath. Have I mentioned how much I love my reverse tweezers? Just saying. All right, and there it is, people. I'm not gonna pull the belly band off, belly, belly band, the belly, belly band off right now because I want to let everything dry where I want it. Like right there, get right there. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and make the innards of the card, and I'm going to put it like that so that I don't mess up and put it on portrait. How many times have you ever done that? You've done that, right? You make a landscape card and then you very carefully make your inside portrait and you go to put it in and you're like, oh, darn it. Yeah, so done that. I can't tell you how many times. In fact, I made one where I put the, I put it in upside down. I gave that one to my husband. I know, I'm a bad wife. All right, so for the inside, I'm going to put my happy birthday sentiment in uh, Poppy Parade. Yeah, Jeffy, I assume that is sarcasm. <laughs> and I appreciate sarcasm, I do. Yeah, I my theory is there's them who has and them who's never made a card. <laughs> We've all done that, right? And it's so frustrating. All right, so happy birthday goes there. And now that I'm, I've am i got it for sure in the right order, I'm gonna let that get out. And then I'm gonna use some, um, <clears throat> some of my tuxedo black and I'm going to stamp my flower, the outline of the flower in tuxedo black down in the corner. And while I have it out, in a, in a frenzy of efficiency, I'm going to do my envelope and I'm gonna make sure I've got it right side up. And I'm just holding it a beat to make sure I get a good image. Now we're gonna put this away so that I don't, in theory, I won't have ink all over the place. Now, I'm going to take <clears throat> this splotch image and I'm going to splotchify the flower, but I'm gonna stamp it off once and then stamp it. Okay, 
And then I'm going to stamp it off once and stamp the envelope. Yeah, we've all done it. We've all done it. It's, and it's just frustrating as can be. And then I'm going to just go ahead and do a little bit of splotching in the center here on the envelope flap and repeat that on the inside. And no, I did not stamp off once. This one is a much more artsy flower, so I'm happy with it. Pretty abstract. In fact, I should probably cut off my left ear right now because that would make me more appropriate to this kind of flower. <clears throat> so I just want, so I took a really scientific Facebook test just a little while ago. You know it's scientific because it was on Facebook. And it was supposed to be you look at this series of pictures and you say what you see first. And it gives you two choices and then a something else. And so I went and I did all of those. And the whole idea is here is depending on what you see in the pictures is whether you are a right-brained person or a left-brained person. So what would you all say I turned out to be? If you were just, you know, a guessing person knowing me only from my Facebook lives. Matted and decorated front to the back of the card. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Kathy says both. Oh, now, Kathy, have you seen my feed? I think you've seen my feed. But you are correct. The answer is both. I am equally left and right-brained, which actually is not all that far-fetched, I don't think, considering I was an engineer or, well, I was an engineering student. I have a degree in engineering, and I was a pilot, which is kind of right brainish. And uh, then I do this, so this is kind of left brain. So I thought that was, that means, what this means is very, very accurate test. Highly accurate, very scientific, and something you could take to the bank. Okay, so I've made a little bit of a, you know, I got a little busy with that poppy parade right there, so I'm just going to use my eraser to cover it up. And if I was really worried about it, which I'm not right now. Okay, I am. <laughs> Let's just be real, I am. I'm going to find me a pearl. Find a pearl. Ooh, no, you know what would be pretty would be a champagne jewel. That would be pretty. Hang on, I'm finding my champagne jewels. Here we go. That's what I'm going to do. Always cover up a smudge with a bling of some sort. And it happened to be in a very good spot. There, done. It's like it never happened. Like it never happened. Okay. Now let's go ahead and carefully take off our belly band, which should be pretty well dry by now. And put this in the inside of our card. And we'll be almost done. I am no brain. <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, I wondered, you know, if you put something else on all of the answers, I mean, what would, what would that be? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, now the next place that's a trick is remember for my, now, if you weren't, you, this matters because this is a right side up paper, right? If you used didn't matter paper, so upside down, right side up, both equally left brain and right brain paper, you could actually make this the top or make this the top, which means it wouldn't matter which way you put your um, sentiment in. But since I have a upside down right paper here, then I want the card to be the right way. So let's be sure I do that. And we'll just adhere that in the middle like so. Isn't that pretty? Hey, you guys, while you are hoping that Stampin' Up! continues the Frosted <clears throat> Bouquet die set, please also be saying a kind word for Champagne Rhinestones because I love them so much. Okay, and there is the card. So let's go ahead and put our paper on our envelope flap. Thank you, Daryl. <clears throat> and again, this is a right side up paper. It has a right side up and a wrong side down. 
right side up and wrong side down. I think that's the same thing, yeah. Okay, and then we'll just put this on like so. <coughs> okay. I gotta say, if anybody had said, put Poppy Parade, Blackberry Bliss, Old Olive, and Pool Party together, I'd have said no. That is not an appropriate color scheme. Which is one of the really cool things about working with Stampin' Up! things because you can learn a lot about what will work together. So when I see people who are starting out, I say let Stampin' Up! do the work for you. Pick a favorite DSP and use color combinations within that DSP because you know they will work, right? Make sure you have the cardstock and the inks and the markers and the refills for the entire suite. So, you know, you're gonna have Blackberry Bliss, Old Olive, Pool Party, Poppy Parade. Those are the colors you wanna have when you're playing with this, this uh, set of paper. And if you do that at the start, stick within that color grouping that's in the paper colors, you can't go wrong. And then as you get a little more experienced, you'll see colors and combinations that go together that you didn't realize. And then you begin to um, train your artistic color brain. Ooh, that sounded pretty good, didn't it? All right, so there we go. There it is, a gatefold card. Remember, you can make your gates whatever size you want, starting with eight and a half, five and a half this way, eight and a half this way. And then when you make your, car, your, your score lines and your folds, just be sure you've got four and a quarter between them so that it will fit into your envelope. All right. Okay, guys, I appreciate y'all joining very much. Just so you know, just a recap of what's going to happen on Saturday. We're starting at 1 p.m. Eastern. We'll run till about 6, and each hour there is someone scheduled to give a live. I am at 2 o'clock, if you're interested in that, and that will be in lieu of my 7 o'clock video. So it's on Facebook on Saturday at 2 o'clock. Um, I've got the link to the Facebook event out on my blog, so please go to it, get signed up, join the group, and then select the notifications so that you see everything that we post between now and when we start. All right, guys, I hope I'll see you all on Saturday, and have a wonderful rest of your week. Thank you so much for spending part of your day with me. Bye-bye.